How's it going, people? Bobby here once again. You might know me online as Iron Hammer 5, and today I've got a review of, if you can see it, it's the Milo tank from Eleaf. And by the way, it's Milo, not Mellow. Who keeps calling it Mellow? You can't call it a Limo and then swap the letters around and then call this one a Mellow. It doesn't work like that. So don't fuck around anymore and take a look at it. So, in case you care, here's the box it comes in Eleaf on the sides. Uh, a bit of text on the back. Milo Atomizer is especially designed for Elite fans to better play with high output batteries. It's constructed out of stainless steel, along with a glass tube body and a glass mouthpiece. The coil is 0.5 ohms. Not intended for women, all that normal stuff. Um, no warnings about the fact that it's a 0.5 ohm coil, which some people might find a bit frustrating when you, if, you, if a newbie picks this up and they're not sure what's happening. Um, and it could be a little bit dangerous if not used correctly. Um, so, open it up, you get a small manual in here. Um, once again, I don't think there's any uh, mention of using a specific battery or making sure that your battery is sub-ohm compatible uh, in there either. Um, then we have the tank, it comes in here like this. You see the tank with its mouthpiece all assembled there. It has a coil inside when you buy it and you get a spare coil in there. Also, and that's about it for the box. So here's the tank. Um, looks like many other sub ohm tanks, really. Uh, you can see you've got three airflow holes on that side, and there's two on this side because there's a little pin in the hole. Uh, but that is adjustable. Uh, it's quite stiff. You can adjust it down to be closed on that side and have just one hole on that side. And as you open it up, if I can, because it's all slippery and juicy. It's quite stiff airflow control, but you can see it does open up there all the way to three holes with two holes on that side. So there's a pin in there, it stops it spinning all the way, and uh, there's a bit of cotton or something stuck in there. And um, it's a pretty decent airflow. Uh, it's not the biggest, but uh, it's sufficient for a 0.5 ohm coil, in my opinion. Uh, on the bottom there, you have a center pin that does protrude out. Um, I have fired it on a hybrid adapter, but I wouldn't make a hat on a hybrid mod just to play with it. But um, I wouldn't mess around with it. It's not worth it, to be honest. Um, I just did it just to see. It does stick out more than some other tanks, but it's not a hell of a lot. Um, I certainly wouldn't leave it laying around attached to a hybrid mod. And I wouldn't recommend anybody else done it. I just was fucking around. Um, but I know what I'm doing. Um, so it comes apart. Uh, glass drip tip there. It's not a bad little drip tip. I don't really like the glass drip tips so much. They look kind of horrible once they start getting all drops of juice and stuff in it. I don't like the way it looks. Um, you can see there's a fairly wide airflow hole going all the way down there through the chimney. And it comes apart into just two parts, really. Uh, the tank top part, uh, this doesn't come apart, so it can be a bit of a bitch to clean. Um, especially if you put water in it, it's going to be hard to get the excess water out to dry it off and stuff. But... Uh, that's just how it is with this one. Um, and then we have the base there with an atomizer head in. And you might notice, I don't know if you'll be able to see or not, but this atomizer head is actually, if you can see, I don't know if you can, but it's in a spire. You can, can you see a spire on this? It says a spire. Um, it's actually a really juicy and messy Aspire Atlantis core head, which fits in this atomizer. I'd heard people say that it fit as I dry the juice off my fingers. I'd heard people say it fits, and um, for the sake of the review, I wanted to at least get an Atlantis head and check it out in there, and it fits perfectly. The juice holes are a little bit situated like a little bit higher, so um, they don't line up with these little grooves that are in the tank, that you can see those little semicircle grooves. Um, it doesn't quite line up perfectly, but it wicks just fine, and there's a gap between there anyway. So um, if you're ever stuck for Milo heads, you can just grab an Aspire Atlantis head and put it in there. And it'll be interesting to see with the uh, new Aspire Atlantis cotton coils, uh, the new ones that are coming out now. It'll be interesting to see how they work in there. So um, I think that's just about it for the tank. As I wiped, I've just wiped juice on my face now because I'm all juicy everywhere. Um, but you, you've seen my videos before, right? You know how it is. That's the way it goes when you're watching Iron Hammer 5's channel. Um, let's get this coil head out and just simply screws in. As with any other coil head, we can pop that in there. And then before 
you put it in, if you if you look at the difference between the two, I don't know how much you can really tell. Um, this is the Aspire Atlantis one. There's not much in it. There's a bit of a bigger airflow hole, and I have seen that found that I get a bit more vapor production with the Aspire Atlantis head than I do with the Milo one. Um, they've both got that kind of grill on top, and uh, they both look like they're using the same gauge wire, although it's hard to tell. Um, so there's the head in there. Before you fill it up with juice, you're going to want to drip a little bit on the head just to make sure it's primed. I've got some Vape Boy Kiwi Raya. It came yesterday. It could do with a little bit more steeping, to be honest, but uh, I'm going to vape it anyway. I don't care. Uh, you're going to want to drip a few drops in there. I'd rather flood it than have it dry. Uh, a little bit around the edges on the parts where the wick goes to juice wicks. Um, make a bit of a mess I would say make sure it's juiced up but don't worry about it too much um, you'll be able to clear that out um, I've flooded it a little bit but I don't mind and then to fill with juice obviously as with any other tank you're just going to pour it down the side and try not to get it in the middle and these glass dropper bowls can be a pain in the ass especially if you fill in the tank not so bad when you're dripping, hey guys, but there we go, there's some juice in there. We'll put that back together. Um, when you screw it back together, you are going to want to try and make sure that those little juice wick holes are lined up. It's hard to see because there's a drop there. It's filled with juice, it makes it difficult to see. Can you see there's a little circle lined up inside, and if I twist it, it kind of moves? You're going to want to make sure they're lined up with the juice wells so that it can wick better and uh, there it is dripped it back on top covered in juice uh, I'm going to clean this up chuck it on top of a mod and uh, talk a little bit about how it vapes so that was uh, the messiest close up video I've ever done I think um, my hands are still a bit juicy but fuck it who cares right the Milo tank uh, for the sake of this video, I've got it on top of the iStick 30 watt, which uh, I think is how Eleaf probably intended it to be vaped. Uh, it's a 23 millimeter tank, and it fits perfectly on the iStick, which is also 23 millimeter. So uh, it's a nice, tiny little setup, really, if you look at it. Um, and great way to start getting into some uh, sub ohm vaping, I would say. Uh, but let's have a little vape of it. I'm going to turn it up to 30 watts. That's where I like it. Um, maybe 32 even it can handle. Uh, with the Atlantis heads in, I liked it um, about 35-ish. Um, but you won't want to go much more higher than 30 with this one because you will get some dry hits, especially if you're using the high G juice. So you can see the vapor production on a brand new coil head is not too bad. Um, flavor is also good. Flavor in the Milo heads I prefer over the Atlantis heads. Atlantis heads got some funk to it, whether it's that wicking material or not, I don't know. Um, this one I seem to get better flavor from. Um, and to be honest, the vape as a whole is a pretty nice vape. The coil heads have lasted me, if I really want to go at it with a high VG juice, I'd say about four or five days. Um, if you're using a higher PG and you don't vape quite so crazy as what I do on it, uh, you probably get a week out of them easily, I would say. Um, even after five days of me going heavy on it, the coils were still fine. I mean, they vaped still fine. They weren't too gunked up or anything, but I was starting to notice the vape production dropping off a little bit. Um, and so I changed it out for the Atlantis one and then I've changed it back to this one. So um, the core heads last just as long as any others, I would say. Um, you could get way more use out of them like that if you wanted to, um, if you could deal with a bit less vapor production. Um, but I would rather change it out as soon as it starts to drop off a little bit. That's just my preference. Um, to be honest, on a the whole, there's not much more to say apart from this thing costs £15.99 here in the UK. Um, I got this one from my EPAC, which is a vendor that I visit a lot. Um, they do great service and uh, quick next day delivery with cheap postage too. So um, 
I've always been happy with them. They've got this for fifteen ninety nine, which comes with a spare coil head. Um, the coil heads are cheap too. I think they're like one pound seventy five or something for a coil head, which is one of the cheapest ones out there. Um, so, if you're looking to get into like a sub owned tank or something, and you're not sure if it's for you, and you don't want to go and spend a lot of money on like a sub tank or something, um, which is like about ten pounds more, then um, this would be a nice little way to try it out. And I don't think you'd be disappointed either. Like, if you're first coming from like a Spy Nautilus or something, or a smaller tank that's uh, not quite so um, low ohms, um, you're probably going to re very much enjoy this. Like, for me personally, um, this is not something that I would choose to vape all the time just because I'm used to my RDAs and that's just how I vape. I vape with my drippers. But um, if I'm feeling lazy, this does the job for sure. And uh, for fifteen ninety nine for a tank, it's going to satisfy most anybody who wants to give up smoking. I mean, uh, if this isn't enough for you, then um, you're going to be struggling, I suppose. Um, it's a nice vape, nice flavor. Wick's great, high VG. Like I've had like 87% VG of my DIY pink custard in there. Um, not my pink custard, the other one. Um, it was 87% VG and it wicked fine. The only time I got dry hits was when I turned it up too high and tried to chain vape it. Um, but at 30 watts on high VG juice, it wicked absolutely no problem at all, just in normal use. So, with that guys, I don't think there's much more to say. It's a sub ohm tank. It looks very similar to the others. Um, it's 23 millimeters, where a lot of the others are 22. It's cheap. It's a nice vape. And I would be more than happy with this for $15.99. Uh, paired with an eye stick or another small 30 watt device, it's a perfect little setup. You're obviously going to want to make sure your device can fire down to 0.5 ohms. All the cores I've had do read at 0.6, which seems to be a running theme with these 0.5 ohm cores. They all seem to read at 0.6 in all the sub tanks. Um, I think that's a tolerance thing to make sure it doesn't go below 0.5. They'd rather have it above 0.5. I don't know why they do it that way. I would assume that's why. Um, don't think there's a lot more to say, guys. I think I'll leave you with a vape. This strawberry and kiwi flavor from Vape Watch is pretty tasty, by the way. Um, I think that's all. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment if you've got any questions. There's probably something I forgot to say about this that I should have mentioned. Ask me below. I'll try and answer it as quickly as I can. Um, find me on Twitter, Ironhammer5, Instagram, Ironhammer5, Ironhammer5.com, where you can also go over there, fill in a form or send me an email if you'd like to get in touch. And um, I'll leave you there, guys. So take care. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.